Across the animal kingdom, there are many different ways that animals reproduce and raise their young. Some animals only have one or two partners throughout their lifetime, whereas other animals can have plenty of partners. Fertilization can happen both internally and externally, and each species seems to have a different way of doing it. When it comes to raising young, some animals will only have a few offspring but will exhibit a lot of parental care, whereas other creatures will lay hundreds if not thousands of eggs and show no parental care. There's no right or wrong way to reproduce and raise your young, and certain strategies suit different animals for different reasons. Unfortunately for some animals, it's difficult to find a mate and reproduce, as some animals are critically endangered, and some animals live in very remote areas where it's hard to find a mate. If you're a male, in most cases this means it's game over and you're unable to reproduce, but for some animals, if you're a female, this may not be the case. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Some animals are able to reproduce asexually, and this type of reproduction does not involve the fusion of gametes, or change in the number of chromosomes. This means that some animals can essentially self-fertilize, but there are many different forms of asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is relatively common in the insect world, but in today's video I will be focusing on large animals that are capable of asexual reproduction. The first group of animals we will be taking a look at are the pythons, and this family of snakes is quite diverse. Pythons can be found in Africa, Asia and Australia, and some members in this family are among the largest snakes in the world. There are 10 genera and 39 species, and the two largest pythons are the reticulated python and the burmese python. The reticulated python is longer, but the burmese python is generally heavier. These two snakes feed on a wide variety of animals, but they seem to prefer small to medium sized mammals. These two snakes are among the few snakes that can kill and consume a human, but fatal attacks on humans are extremely rare. Not all python species are known to be able to reproduce asexually, but there have been a few examples. Back in 2020, in a zoo in Missouri, a 62-year-old bull python laid several eggs. In most cases, this wouldn't be the most exciting news, but this snake hadn't been in contact with a male for decades. It's possible that the female snake could have been storing sperm and waiting to fertilize her eggs, but this would mean that she had been doing so since the 1990s. Another theory is that it could have been a result of parthenogenesis, which is a form of asexual reproduction in which a female can produce an embryo without fertilizing an egg with sperm. This kind of asexual reproduction is very rare with snakes, but now and again it does happen. A similar occurrence happened at a zoo in Kentucky, but this time the snake was a reticulated python. In this instance, six pythons were produced, and it was the result of a virgin birth. The snake in question only shared an exhibit with another female, so there's no way that she could have mated with a male. Unfortunately for the native animals of Florida, it also appears that the Burmese python can reproduce in this way, and this might be one of the many reasons why they've been such a successful invasive species in Florida. The next group of animals we will be taking a look at are the sharks. Sharks are once again another diverse group of animals, and each species is adapted to a different way of life. There are some that belong in the open ocean, and there are others that spend most of their time on the sea floor. Famously, some sharks have the potential to be very dangerous creatures, and some are very gentle giants. Today, there are over 500 species of shark, but a large number of these sharks are threatened with extinction. The biggest threat for sharks comes in the form of overfishing, as there's high demands for their fins. At first, it may not seem that this industry has a large effect on sharks, but it's believed that around 100 million sharks are killed each year worldwide, and this is mainly because of the shark fin soup industry. As there are so many different species of shark, there are many different ways that they reproduce. Most shark eggs are fertilized internally, but some species give birth to live young and others lay eggs. Famously, most sharks are not the best of parents, as most sharks will choose to eat their own kind, and some of them will even try and eat their own young. Because of the decline in shark populations worldwide, it could get harder and harder for sharks to find a mate. 
Thankfully for some species, if this is the case, they are able to reproduce asexually. The shark's form of asexual reproduction is known as automictic parthenogenesis, and this is where a female's egg is fertilized by an adjacent cell known as a polar body. This famously happened at the end of 2022 in the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, where one zebra shark had a virgin birth. The female had the choice to mate with males, but instead she reproduced asexually. This story was particularly strange, because in sharks, asexual reproduction is viewed as a last-ditch effort at reproduction. It was thought that sharks only do this when they have no other option, but this shark chose to. Unfortunately, asexual reproduction also comes with some downsides, because sharks that are born from virgin births are far more likely to have a shorter life expectancy. Hammerhead sharks are also known to be able to reproduce asexually, and this is only going to become more useful in a world with less and less sharks. For our final animal, we will be heading over to Indonesia, as we have the Komodo dragon. The Komodo dragon is the largest member of the monitor lizard family, and it's endemic to four Indonesian islands. It is the largest extant species of lizard, but it does have a much larger extinct relative. Komodo dragons are apex predators, and they feed on a variety of invertebrates, birds, and large mammals. To help them take down these animals, they are mildly venomous, and in some very rare cases, they have been known to take down humans. In the wild, mating usually occurs between May and August, with their eggs being eventually laid in September. During this time, the males will fight over females, and some will even grapple with each other on their hind legs. Strangely, Komodo dragons can be monogamous, and in some cases they do form pair bonds. This is extremely rare behaviour for lizards, and it means that Komodo dragons are quite unique. Luckily for the females, if they are unable to find a male, they can reproduce asexually. This happened in captivity in London Zoo in 2005, where a female had been separated from her partner for more than two years. Initially, it was believed that she had stored sperm, but then a similar occurrence happened a year later in Chester Zoo. This time the female laid 11 eggs, and 7 of them hatched and they were all male. This female had never been in contact with males her whole life, so it was proof that Komodo dragons could reproduce asexually. This is very good news for the Komodo dragon as a species, as they are currently listed as endangered. This ability may make it easier for them to bounce back, and hopefully we'll get to see more Komodo dragons in the wild in the future. Of course, there are many other examples of large animals that can reproduce asexually, so if you know of any, let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.